Welcome to Asset TV. I'm Jillian Kemmerer. Today, we are joined in the studio by Sean McCarthy, CEO of Build America Mutual, who will offer an overview of trends in municipal bonds and what to expect for 2024. Sean, always a pleasure having you here. Jillian, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. So one of the major headlines from 2023 was growing demand for insured municipal bonds. And to put some numbers to it, bond insurance utilization by state and local government issuers was up 14% to the highest levels we've seen since 2008, the global financial crisis. What drove the growth? And is that a trend that you think continues into 2024? So I think it will continue going forward. Um, the trend really started um, at the beginning of COVID. Um, when uh, I think across the boards, um, uh, investors, both retail and institutional, became concerned about where credits were going to go. It was an uncertain market. People didn't know whether revenue bonds were going to um, suffer terribly through uh, COVID. And it was really in an uncertain time. And at that point in time, we saw utilization start to pick up. And it's grown steadily since um, as a result of that. Now. A couple of things I would sort of uh, give credit for that. Um, first, I think bond insurance is used in a broader fashion than it was historically. So if you think about the traditional utilization of bond insurance is to protect against defaults in somebody's portfolio, institutional or retail. But now it's used to protect liquidity, um, uh, provide liquidity on, on bonds that you own, uh, to preserve value uh, as bonds are um, a mark to market, uh, um, insured bonds have a great amount of stability, and to manage uh, strategic portfolio um, uh, issues such as uh, single risk. So beyond the supply and demand factors and insurance, what are the broader trends you also expect to see in the market in 2024? So 2024, a couple of things are going to happen. If you think that, and um, I don't have a crystal ball, but um, there's a good chance that interest rates will at some point this year peak um, and, and therefore um, start to come down. If, uh, so we'd anticipate as a result of that, that the primary market or new issuance of municipal bonds will start to have a resurgence. Now there's really been a backlog the last couple of years has been slower for the primary market than it has been in the past. And so we think that that will, will come back um, in, in spades. Uh, not only that, um, when you look at the market uh, going forward, that as interest rates decline, refinancings where um, municipalities are lowering the cost of their borrowing by refinancing debt that they issued at a higher rate will increase as well. So we focused on supply side factors, but now we have to turn to the other side. Is there enough demand to support that supply? So yeah, you know, absolutely. I think that uh, you know the retail investor is sort of the backbone of, of the market. Tax exempt bonds are an important part of both uh, large and small uh, investors. Um, and if, if you take a step back and think that there is this incredible pent up demand for the issuance of municipal bonds, if you think about it, municipal bonds are really um, uh, used to you know, build the essential infrastructure uh, in the United States. And 80% of those municipal bonds um, constitute what you think of as essential um, uh, services. So whether it's uh, hospitals, uh, bridges, tunnels, roads, subways, uh, are all financed with municipal bonds. And that's done at the state and local governmental level. So we see that that demand is going to increase uh, dramatically. There's been a backlog, not only of new issuance, but repairing existing infrastructure, whether it's subways or roads, uh, going forward. So we think that not only is demand increasing, but that the, the core retail investor who's either buying individual municipal bonds or buying funds that are managed by institutional investors that are household names. Obviously, we can't escape the fact that this is an election year. The U.S. presidential election will be uh, watched across the world. So it begs the question, how might the elections impact the municipal bond market? Well, every election year affects the, the municipal bond market. A um, uh, tremendous number of municipal bond issues are voted on by uh, individuals within their states and communities. In fact, in 2023, $110 billion worth of transactions were voter approved. So that's a lot of infrastructure that has been voter approved that will be coming to the market in the next couple of years. 
In a presidential election year, it's important to look at what the issues are that affect the municipal bond market. And so you'll see a number of bond issues that come onto the ballot, mostly because um, uh, in an election year, uh, the November election has a higher uh, participation level. And so uh, many, many issues come to, to fore uh, in the November um, election cycle. So we'd see that um, infrastructure as a whole uh, will be a topic that will be debated. Um, and, and the transactions that come uh, that make really the backbone of America uh, will be a major part of the, the dialogue this year. What about the credit outlook for the municipal bond issuers? If the economy slows down, are we going to see financial stress here? It's a good question. Um, I, I think that uh, each credit has to be taken one at a time. So and I'll give you an example. So um, in a higher interest rate environment, um, mortgage rates are higher. Uh, and when mortgage rates are higher, the price of houses uh, become uh, stressed and sometimes in certain markets go down. Uh, when that happens, that potentially lowers the revenue stream that municipalities count on as they're taxing the assessed value of, of homes. So we look at that this is a case-by-case, state-by-state, town-by-town uh, issue, but it's one of the many things that we take a look at when we're examining the entire fiscal health of a municipality. And so at the end of the day, um, you know, our role in the market is to guarantee the investor um, timely payment of principal and interest when due. Different than any other kind of insurance where you get, where you, if the, there's been a, if you've had a car crash, you're gonna call up your insurer, there's gonna be a debate about how much um, uh, you're gonna get reimbursed for repairing your car. Uh, financial guarantee insurance, we're double A rated by Standard & Poor's, is we pay first and we mitigate later. So investors can count on getting their debt service payment, timely payment of principal and interest when they expected it. And that's important because a lot of municipal bonds uh, are held by people who are retired. And so that we want to make sure what we're really guaranteeing is a fundamental liquidity for them and assure that uh, you know, their financial planning is, is solid. Well, from the uptake and in interest in insured municipal bonds to the supply and demand side factors that might shape 2024, thank you so much for giving us such a comprehensive look at municipal bonds for the upcoming year. Uh, Jillian, thanks. It's really a pleasure to be here. And thank you for tuning in. From our studios in New York, I'm Jillian Kemmerer for Asset TV.